Um, let, let's move on to talking about coding itself, the actual process of coding, because that's, I think, something a lot of people find that quite hard to do. Yeah. We're all talking about what the thematic idea is. But, but I mean, what do you do with coding? You, you, you are identifying sections of text that in some way represent the theme or, or are examples of the theme. Well, what's the relation between the text and the theme itself? Okay. Um, uh, yes, yeah, so, I mean, I think I'd, I'd go along with the latter point you made, that it, in, in a sense that they are kind of instances of some thematic idea that, that transcends just that one example, I guess. So you're looking for something that chunks of text and there's no hard and fast rules about how big those chunks should be. I was going to ask you about that. How, but how big but, but I think, I think practically, I mean, it's often, uh, it's often one or two interchanges between interviewer and interviewee. So it's often you know, that the interview will be exploring some idea, and within that, in one or two questions, it'll capture perhaps you know one broad theme, and but it may maybe a couple of overlapping themes. And certainly, template analysis coding allows overlapping. So the same themes. passages can be coded more yeah. than one way. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, and it might well be that the whole passage relates to one top-level theme, yeah. but also to several lower-level things that might be linked to a different top-level theme. Yeah. So, so, that, so I mean, very, very practical, physical thing. If you're doing this by hand, it can get quite messy mm -hmm. because you can be having quite a lot of nested coding. So if you are doing it by hand, I mean, I, I have a standard format of how I like my transcripts set out, oh. which, which is really wide margins and double space. So you've got space to write in And line numbers, because yeah. you do need to be able to read your own scribbles mm -hmm. and your own scrolls, mm -hmm. you know, of to to where, where you're linking yeah, things. Yeah. What about, could you have a code book as well that you keep alongside the, the code Yeah, book? yeah, and clearly once you've got the initial template, that's, that's what you keep alongside it. So it's a template book, yeah, presumably. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, in, but, but what you also <coughs> might want to do is to actually have a, a, a written definitions of themes. I, I, I rarely do that for every theme. I think, you know, ideally one would, but it's too much time. I mean, mm. if you look at all the levels... All the textbooks uh, recommend that, don't yeah, Keeping yeah. very good records but, of exactly what yeah. the theme's about. But I think, I think the reality is that there's some themes, you, you don't have any problem in applying them, actually, in telling what represents them. They're, they're very well-defined, they're fairly... Perhaps, perhaps some of the more descriptive types of themes as well. Mm -hmm. Whereas others, you're forever thinking, is it this or that? Which does it better represent? And in those cases, I think you really do need to make yourself sit down and write a definition, and often that will clarify. Often the first thing that does is it makes it clear, does to me, that I haven't really thought through what this theme is. Mm -hmm. See, by forcing myself to define it, I realise right. I haven't yes. really thought this through yes. enough yet, yes. have I? Yeah. That's why it's going wrong. Yeah. And um, that's where you might start revising yeah. it, which we'll come yeah. back to later yeah. on. Yeah. 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 So I can see, I mean, there are obviously advantages in using CACDAS software in terms of both the com complexity of the coding but you, in things like Enviva, the way you can use memos and so on, you can, yeah, you can, yes. you can keep all your reminders to hand. So your ideas, your definitions yeah. and so on, yeah. can be kept yeah. alongside the, the, code, yeah. the, the code name itself. Yeah. 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 I mean, it sounds what you're saying, that, that actually the, 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 the chunks of text that you're coding are, are quite substantial. We're not mm. talking about one line or one phrase I mean, there might here. be. There might sometimes be. If some, there's a little pithy phrase yeah. that just sums up some some idea that, that seems like it ought to be part of the analysis, that's fine, and it will happen. But quite, yeah, there can be quite substantial. And, and in any case, I, I tend to prefer to index it broader rather than narrower. Right, yeah, yeah. Certainly, yeah. if you're using cat dust, then you've got the yeah. issues about retrieval and wanting to retrieve well, that's the, yeah, a big enough chunk. Ask about why code at all? Because mm. the, the, historically, the reason why one coded was in order to retrieve the text. Yeah. And, and read all the text that's about the same topic all together. Um, and obviously, if you've just got one line or one phrase, it, it, there's not enough context yeah. to make sense of yeah. that. Now, is that something you, that you do in template analysis, that retrievals, or are you much more focused at the level of the coding frame itself, the template itself? Um, I think you're probably s somewhat more focused on the, f on the frame itself, the template, than in some of the more purely kind of a bottom up as I've been saying right, approaches. Yes, yeah, but yeah. there should be a kind of playing back and forth between mm, them. And, yeah. I, and I always, when I'm doing teaching on this and things I've written, I say there is a danger that you get too fixated on the template. 
and in a sense, in fact, I was doing some this morning, and I made this point. Mm. You can't, you, you kind of can almost fetishize it. It becomes this, this object to be the affected. Yes, yes, the template, yeah. mm. instead of a tool. And the, you know, yeah. it's there as a tool to help you tell all the story of this data and your yes. your engagement with yeah. it. Yeah. And, and yeah. I've seen, you know, I've seen things where that goes wrong, and then people, you know. Uh, are looking at the template and that doesn't quite fit there and, they've, and they th I say well why not well it just doesn't make sense I go yeah but what is that indexing in the data maybe it did when you were looking at the data go back and look at the data mm -hmm. so I think you should be as you modify it you should be going back but I think it is true that quite a lot of the time when you're coming to draw it together you are looking at it at the level of these conceptual ideas across the data set as a whole not looking all the time at very individual ideographic level right, of, yes, of analysis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I mean, uh, now having said this, you can use a template approach in a much more phenomenological way, which would be very small numbers in much more depth and, and, and focusing on the individual cases more than the cross case. Right. But I think the most common way it's used it is with the, I'm going to say very rough rule of thumb, 10 to 20 hour long interviews with a fairly applied focus. That's the kind yeah, of setting right, yes, where I yeah. most commonly would yeah. see it used. But so not small scale case studies, but, but tends not to be. Small, small Although I published something based on N of 1 using it recently, <laughs> so it can, it be, can done. be done. Yes, okay. you know, yeah. it's, it's if you find that style, and I suppose I'm used to it now, and I'm used to that way of thinking about it, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and so I might use it stretch the boundaries of yeah. kind of the range of convenience really of, of its use.